Hey there, I'm Anthony, and welcome. Um, this is part four of our Tear Apart series. We don't typically tear a whole lot apart for, for uh, YouTube. Um, we do a lot more melting than we do tearing apart, but as it's been raining for the last uh, four days with some hail and everything, um, we have been scared indoors and I am fulfilling some requests to tear some specific devices apart. I have done a server, I have done a monitor, I've done a printer, and now is the last part of this four-part series. We are taking apart this Toshiba Tekra. This Tekra is a 53, no, excuse me, it's a 530 um, CVT series. Uh, this originally was manufactured and released in 1996, so that puts it at about 24 years. So, um, some quick specs on this. Uh, it's got a Pentium MMX chip in it. So its CPU is a Pentium, uh, Pentium Pro. And uh, it had, oh, let's see, it had a 32 megabyte standard install for its RAM up to 100, I believe, 180 megabyte maximum. Nowadays, a standard desktop will have 16 gig to 32 gig and up to like 64 to 128 gigabyte maximum. So uh, the video card on this, it was a two or four megabyte option. Um, this, this is a dinosaur in the computer world. So um, today we're gonna tear it apart. We're gonna see what's inside. We're gonna have fun um, exploring history. Yeah, feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Um, I really don't know much about it other than the spec sheet that I had to look up to, to, to know more about this machine. In general though, they don't make machines like this anymore. There's a magpie just on the other side of my door. Those that are uh, familiar with this channel know that magpies live in my yard and we're gonna be sung to this entire video. Okay. So let's dive right in. All right. Well, to get started, we take off case screws. Most laptops will have it all on the bottom. This one does have a few on the sides, but we are going to start on the bottom. Now, the battery was taken out and a few other components were recovered by its previous owner. Let's see what's under panel one here. This was the hard drive bay. Here's our hard drive caddy. The hard drive was recovered, as was the battery, by its previous owner. Got a nice ribbon cable. Pull the CD-ROM off. We've got some nice pins in there. This one's actually heavier than a standard CD-ROM from a laptop. There's a little bit more, more uh, material in here than uh, typically found in a laptop. Sure enough, there is our RAM. There we go. Pull this off. There's no indicator of exactly how much memory it is. This could be a 128 module, or that could just be part of a model number, I'm not sure. But it's got the gold pins, it's got all these, these IC chips, it's got some MLCC scattered around, but there you go. Nice memory module, let's set that off to the side. There are screws in the weirdest places in here. If I remember correctly, this keyboard came up. If I am careful, I might be able to peel it up without damaging it. There we go. So, our keyboard is now in hand. 
we see a ribbon that goes from the keyboard down to the motherboard. And we can just pull that right off. It's got some aluminum tips or some, some non-gold plated tips. Uh, really, without dragging on about the keyboard, um, there really isn't going to be any circuitry or any, any recoverable pieces that are interesting to us today. So we're not going to, we're not going to mess with that today. So at this point, we should be able to start taking the, the casing apart. Oh, I forgot about this little guy. Let's take this one off. I actually don't remember if this is going to be significant to what we're doing right now or later, but it's a screw. It's gonna get, get taken away. But there's this seam that runs all the way around. That will, that's the seam that joins the, the bottom half to the, the top half right here where the keyboard sits. And I just take a chisel or a screwdriver and I twist and you hear that popping noise as each of these clasps lets go. Let's see. Let's get our screwdriver down in here to help us continue to peel this back. We have enough of it now that I think we should be able to just pick this up. Now there's going to be some cables that will want to be... Yeah. Some ribbons in there that want to stay connected between the keyboard layer and the motherboard. So let's reach in here and start pulling some of these cables off. So now that we've got all those cables let go, we now have our top half and our bottom half. Keyboard sat right there and all of these cables connected the motherboard. Okay, we're gonna set the monitor off to the side for a second. We will come back to that. So what we're looking at in here, this is a PCMCIA card slot. This one is a modem. And with my gloves on, it's gonna be hard to pull it out. So let's grab it with my pliers and pull. So this card, this card is a modem or a network card, and actually looks like it fits in our JL45. So this will be our standard ethernet. Yeah, and this is gonna be our standard ethernet. We've got some battery components here, possibly to replace the, the CMOS batteries that, that help your BIOS post and everything, you know, the little beep at the beginning when you turn your computer on. A little battery helps retain the clock and a bunch of your settings so that way your clock doesn't reset itself back to the beginning of time and whatever else. I don't know the purpose of these batteries other than it's possible that these are for that function. This one up here is our audio control and video output. We have an S video connection back here, unless that's a PS2 connection. And no, not a PlayStation 2 connection. The different types of connections for your keyboard and mouse and other peripheral devices was once called a PS2. And that looks like it could be a PS2. Don't recall. And I don't have a PS2 device to try it with. But um, S-Video also looks similar. You've got your infrared. I don't know why that's necessarily on the back of the machine but it looks like it's an infrared eye. And then you have your microphone, your earphone, and your line out. So you've got some gold pins right here. They're really small. You've got some MLCC capacitors on here. If you want to depopulate this board for its components, you've got some LEDs, you've got some different things. So this one's a little bit interesting, but we're gonna move on because really the fun's down here still. This is our modem card right here. So that, that confirms that that is actually the network adapter. And this one is a modem adapter. And this module came with the device, whereas PC MCIA cards were expansions. 
kind of like kind of like your your sim cards or your sd memory we're gonna have to take the rest of this off before i can pull that off i think but uh yeah if you wanted to get an upgrade to your laptop most of these machines were pre-configured the way they are and the best thing you could do was get a pc mcia card that would allow you to in increase what your computer could do you could get um, card readers you could get uh, network cards as this one has you could get wireless adapters um, so this one won't have wi-fi on it just because that wasn't really a thing yet so we're going to carefully peel it out there's a lot of good solid gold pins right along here We'll get those off in just a bit. There's some resistance over here somewhere. Oh, it was just resistant. There we go. Okay. So here's our first two thirds of the motherboard. The last third is down here with the processor. So on here, you'll see things like all these IC chips. You've got a, what I believe to be the South Bridge. Um, this piece right here, I believe peels off and there are so many MLCCs on this board and this little piece of plastic that you can pull off. Huh, there it goes. There's MLCCs on this on both sides. Um, there's MLCCs everywhere on this board. I mean, this is a really rich board for MLCCs. They're not very big. Servers and, and higher end machines will have a lot bigger ones, but you got, you got a lot of things you can depopulate off of this board. You got this really nice big IC chip here. You got a lot of MLCCs supporting it. You got gold terminals in here, um, a coil of sorts. And each one of these, let's see if we can open this up. The, this bay right here has gold pins like crazy in it. So you can either cut them all off or you can use a heat gun and, and heat them all till they fall off. But yeah, there's a lot to this motherboard. You've got a lot of different connections. Hey, there is a USB other than this. It'll be a USB one. Uh, so it'll be a really slow, low throughput, but at least it's got one. Okay. So that's a RAM slot where that one memory module was sitting. There's our CPU and its heat sink with its case fan to exhaust it out. You've got some gold pins where the battery was dangly things off. There's more gold pins in there. No, these ends are not. They're silver plate, probably aluminum. Okay, so the heat sink is already unscrewed. Okay, so this isn't a, this heat sink, I don't remember if I tested it on, my, on the other machine, but I think it's magnetic. It's not magnetic, okay. So it must have been on a different machine. I ran into a steel heat sink recently. That surprised me. I didn't know people made steel heat sinks in modern computers. But um, uh, this will be a cast aluminum then with a little copper bearing fan. Okay. So let's carefully pull the processor out. But this processor right here it's soldered straight to the board. Most modern processors look like this. Got a whole bunch of modern processors in here. But this is a Xeon processor from a server. And you'll see that it's got these pins. Maybe that one's a little bit tougher to see. Let's find one with a lot of pins on it. These pins usually sit down in a socket. So it'll sit down and it'll clamp down and a heat sink goes on top. And that's your processor. This processor, this Intel 
uh, MMX processor. We can get in close enough on this. This processor is soldered straight in. The fun part about this is that's gold down inside there. Oh, man, not what I was aiming to do. But you can see all those little wires. It looks like solid gold, but when you look real close, you can't really see the definition of all those little, those little leads in there. There you go. Okay, and for a little while, those will be the last screws we see. There will be a few more in here. Okay, just like with the body of the of the laptop, you just take your your prying tool, whether it's a chisel or a screwdriver, and you just pop those brackets off. And there's one of our two components that I'm after. Now you've got to be careful in a laptop. In a laptop, you will find, especially the older ones, you'll find a backlight. It's an actual tube, just like you have in like an office space. You've got your, your tube lighting, your neon or your, your xeon lights. You, you've, got, um, you've got to be careful because you, you'll break that easily and then you'll have glass everywhere. How do I know this? Because I've done it. So just know, as you take this panel apart, behind the, typically on the top and on the bottom, behind these metal shields, you will have a, uh, a light or two lights in some cases on each side. Um, another thing back here is plexiglass and that's kind of fun, but just be careful for the, just be careful for the, for the actual glass. The glass, it's not inherently dangerous, but it's just an annoyance when you have glass shards all over your workbench and you cut yourself or embed it in your skin or you step on it with your feet or who knows what, just be careful. So this isn't super, super high quality monitors as far as monitors go, but this monitor is pretty standard. It's gonna have a ribbon to it for the display. And then this is the light coil. You can see how that goes right into the top. And there's the ribbon down on the bottom. So let's pull that ribbon off. But this right here, this is where you're gonna find the light. The fact that we only have one cable to it tells me that we only have one set of lights. Whether it's a single tube or a double tube, I can't remember. I did take apart another laptop recently where it had two tubes at the bottom. When we took apart the monitor earlier in this video series, it had two tubes at the top and two tubes at the bottom. I believe this one only had the one, which is easier to slice it. Come on. There we go. Let's attack it from the other side as well. It is actually screwed on. This one got screwed on right there. So let's take that case screw off. It's also screwed on on this side. So yeah, there were a few screws. Forgot about those. Sometimes working with the gloves and these fine little tiny screws is a pain, but we manage. Oh, there's one more screw. And those that are watching closely, that is actually gold plating. Well, the light did break. It is very fragile, but it didn't shatter like the first time I did this. So we'll carefully pull this up out if we can. 
Let's get our pliers. We're going to grab the end. Okay, we got that. Back. There we go. So this really fragile tube is the light. So as the pixels are showing here, you can't see them unless the light pushes out from the back. So the light will illuminate the plexiglass backing and then that plexiglass piece will take the light and distribute it across the entire monitor and then the, the light shines out and you can see the pixels that are being rendered on this front piece. So there's gonna be four or five layers here. The front layer is the actual layer that shows the image and the back layers help bring those, those pixels to a point that you can see them and recognize what they are. This is all gold plating. You've got MLCCs of significant size. You've got gold dots. You've got gold pins. Um, and these gold plates go all the way out. And another really cool thing about all this, it's double-sided. It's pretty funny. This, this amount of gold plating that, that exists inside of this connection on just about every monitor I've taken apart has one of these. You take the tape off. And you can remove all of these, these data transfer ribbons that put the, the data up onto the matrix of your monitor. But this is the back. You've got gold plates everywhere. This is the front. You still have those same gold plates. And you've got the pin connections. You've got some pins on this too. Now this is still glass, so we're still going to be careful with this. This front piece, let's see, what side is it on? It's on the back side. So there's MLCCs of significant size on here, a gold connection, a little socket for gold pins. You've got more gold pins, so we can peel these off. Uh, these gloves are not doing me any help. Well, I'll finish cleaning this off later, but you can see the gold pins, more MLCCs. But yeah, the monitor is where a lot of the value is going to be at in, in a scrap of a laptop. These pieces are kind of fun to play with, but they're really not useful. They kind of mess with your mind when you look through them. <laughs> kind of bend light funny. This plexiglass panel is actually screwed into the mount. So let's pull that screw off. There. We can take this back sheet off. And I'll step this aside with all my plexiglass. It's pretty nice. It's really thin. It's about a millimeter, two millimeters thin. So it's not, it's not gonna be your heavy durable stuff, but it's plexiglass nonetheless. But uh, historically, every PC MCIA card I've taken apart has had some pretty decent components. So you've got some gold pins here where the, where the network jack plugged in. Well, you're going to be difficult, huh? There we go. Plastic shielding. I wonder if I can take this off carefully without damaging the pins because that would be kind of a fun thing to show you guys. These pins, this is just a metal connection plate. But these pins are pretty interesting to look at. If I peel this back carefully without popping those pins off. There we go. I don't know if the camera angle is gonna help us out, but these pins, are gold plated. Well, thanks for watching. This concludes the video series. Um, 
this one is probably one of the two best parts of the video series. I really love that server. Tearing apart that server was fun, but tearing apart this laptop brought me back to technology I haven't seen in over 20 years. Um, I really liked uh, tearing apart the first one and accidentally tearing into that gold processor and realizing what I had. And so I don't know if you can appreciate it the way that I appreciated it, but um, scrapping and tearing apart machines for fun, uh, it's always been a hobby of mine and you dream about finding things like that. I'm just really excited that I had this opportunity to tear apart two of those machines. Um, as for uh, metal recovery, um, there really isn't a whole lot. If you're into melting down copper or aluminum or collecting metals for things, um, e-waste or electric, electronic waste, um, such as keyboards, mice, printers, they're gonna be terrible investments of time. Uh, computers, uh, monitors, depends what you're after. If you're after the copper and the aluminum, you'll have some pretty good size heat sinks and the fans may have some significant amounts of copper. Um, but again, there are better places to find aluminum and, and copper. So as always, if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe. Um, I am trying to get to 100 subscribers this month, um, or at least by the end of the summer. Uh, this is um, a hobby for me. I don't plan on making myself this big YouTube star by any means, but I would love the support. I'd love the help. Um, comment below what you'd like to see me tear apart, and I will do my best to acquire what you request and safely take it apart. Tune in next week as we continue to try to mold a copper ball. Mm -hmm.